Right, I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you the tools that we use on site. We're obviously not working at the moment, so I've got all the tools at home, just been maintaining the steel saw and stuff. So, let's have a little look at what we've got. Uh, these are the bricking tools, uh, which is the bare essentials, really. Uh, the rest of the stuff, if you want to have a two in one gang or something like that, then you could do with having at least some of that. But this stuff uh, really is the day in, day out stuff. Trowel. Okay, that used to be a 12. Uh, it's probably about an 8 or a 9 now. It's tiny. I definitely need a new one of them. That used to be a Marshalltown wide heel London style. So I'll definitely be getting that style again. Uh, it still holds, because of the wide heel, it still holds a lot of mortar now. Uh, it's pretty mad. You've got a 7 inch trowel, mostly for pick and dip. Uh, most of the time, point in trowel doesn't get much use. Maybe on the beam fill and stuff. Got finger trowel. Uh, if you are doing two things which you're not supposed to do, that ensures a full joint. So I think that's a must. Uh, plugging chisel gets a lot of use. Cold chisel, not so much. Bolster, that's day in, day out on block work. Uh, Claw hammer's not really a bricking tool, but. I do use it quite a lot. One pounder, I think that's an eight pound. Uh, brick hammer's a bit blunt now, but still good weight. Yes, wing. Uh, east wing, is it? Yeah, you've got jointers. Always run three jointers. I've always got a near enough brand spanker for face work. And then the one that's been relegated, which is a bit worn out, I use for blocks for a bit until it's too bad and then chuck it. I've got a designated block jointer, which has got the wider profile. Uh, two tapes always run a five meter for me cuts and stuff and then the bigger one for setting out windows and internal walls uh, suits me they don't last that long when they're getting wet and that but uh, I like to still buy the Stanley's probably a waste of money probably the cheaper ones would last just as long lines and pins these have two set up uh, if you notice what we tend to do is we uh, wind it onto one pin so when you're winding it back in it untwists itself some uh, some reason but and then if you get a knot in it you just cut it off and put the pin back on you've got a line and bobbin which is uh, ready to go some people just use a line and reel but that's awesome uh, and then levels wise you've got uh, corner blocks you have about six of these but I don't know where the rest of them are uh, probably six corner blocks minimum I reckon uh, four foot level stability that's an awesome bit of kit two foot level pretty much just for uh, corbels you got a boat level, which is for soldiers and brick on edge, really. Maybe the corbels now and again. Scaff spanner, pencils, Stanley, soft brush, and that is a super soft brush. And then you've got your clamps. You've got uh, four big clamps for setting up the uh, profiles for block work, which I'll show you a video on, because I think I struggled to explain that. Uh, you've got at least 12 F clamps for setting up the profiles and stuff. I have a few more than 12 because it's surprising how many of these you lose. You drop off the scaffold and stuff, and then always try and have a smaller one. That'll come in handy. Uh, right, that is pretty much your bricking stuff. I'll show you the rest. So you've got profiles, uh, at least four profiles. In an ideal world, if you have them taped up, that makes life easier. You don't really need these on site anymore because we have to build in window frames and door frames, but X frames are a really good bit of kit. You can put two together for French doors and bifolds, so they're mega. You'll see them in one of the other videos. Uh, brushes, you've got a soft brush and a stiff brush. Scraper, that's an awesome bit of kit that gets used day in, day out. Uh, you've got laser level, which I don't use that often unless I'm in footings and I need to find the high spot of the concrete. Um, still saw for the top outs. Uh, uh, always use your water suppression. Like to have my own fuel so I don't have to go begging. Um, always like to have some Hessian on us in case you get caught out with the rain or the frost. Um, roofing felt we've kind of worked out is the best thing for covering up bricks so if there's any lying about any spare just grab it uh, barra I don't really use that often uh, maybe on the first lift and uh, groundwork bricking the carrier obviously he needs his tubs for his water you've got a griller bucket which is for rubble uh, at least four buckets for mortar shovel uh, that's pretty dirty I've been trying to clean it off our labourer doesn't like to clean his shovel. Uh, you got roofing battens because uh, you need them for this. This is a gable profile. Okay, it's awesome bit of kit. I've got four of these. Uh, so yeah, you use them for setting up the gable, uh, the pike profiles. But then apart from that, you can use them for stabilising your 
uh, square section profiles so they're awesome you've got brick clamps for loading out in the morning uh, usually the other lads load out while I set the profiles up so uh, we've usually got three sets of them for the gang but we can make do with two uh, long tape that's for setting out in the ground square don't really use that so much pan saw now and again PPE you obviously need that you've got your boots hard hat uh, earmuffs gloves uh, I've got my little box and my GoPro and stuff like that I'm a little bit OCD with my tools so I've got a checklist because uh, we I don't keep the van I don't keep the tools in the van over the weekend because I need to get the kids bikes in so it's a good chance to uh, check off all your tools and stuff like that uh, and make sure you've got everything for the next week at work and then last but not least CSS card you'll be lucky to get on site without one of them these days uh, and that is pretty much everything you need for two and one gang.